Previously on the Rod Peterson Show. And by the way, I just looked up your Wikipedia. Gus, you are one year older than me. You turned 50 in July. So mine's coming up. Um, I remember when my dad turned 50. I was like, oh, my God, he's ancient. I hope we have him for a few more years. He went to 81, of course. <laughs> you know? But my point is that I had the pleasure of not calling Flutie's games, but being on the sidelines as a sideline reporter and just watching him just going, oh, my God, what he's doing out there. And he won the league MVP six straight years with, like, three different teams. <laughs> I don't know if he got into that or not, but it's not even close who was number two to Doug Flutie. What made right. you want to get Doug? What made you want to get Doug on? Uh, you know, I just, I just love people that have a uh, very interesting past and, and very, um, you know, where there's life is just surrounded by sports and Doug is like that, but he's very interesting, right? He has a band, uh, that he does with his brother. Uh, he, he's, he's doing all kind of charity work. He has a foundation, um, the Flutie foundation, uh, for his son and Doug, he still surfs every morning and then he plays baseball at night. So you talk about a guy that loves sports. Uh, that's the guy you want on your show. Yeah, no kidding. He's uh, he is an icon for sure up here. Just a football icon, uh, no matter the league. Get ready for the Rod Peterson Show. David clapped back at John Tortorella. He was discussing Tortorella's take that Connor McDavid should change his game. But he was like, I'm not even dignifying that with a response. Sometimes smart people say stupid things. He had to have been referring to John Tortorella. Does John Tortorella actually believe that Connor McDavid needs to change his game? Do you think he actually believes that? This is the Rod Peterson Show. Oh, looky, looky. Welcome, everybody. It's a brand new week. It's the RP Show. It is uh, a Monday, November the 22nd. And I tell you, it's an historic day for the Rod Peterson Show today. And uh, I guess I'll tell you why right now. I'm here in South Florida. The Moose is on another remote location. And you're going to hear from him here in moments as we get rolling with the warm-up here for E. Cole Electric. Got a very special Monday show for you. Uh, on the way, retired NHL referee Tim Peel coming up here in hour one. He is the rules analyst at dailyfaceoff.com. That's what Tim Peel's up to now. And uh, coming up in hour two, CBC curling aficionado Devin Haru. And, um, you know, why belabor things? Let's bring the moose in right now. Darren Moose DuPont. He is at the Great Western Brewery in Saskatoon, ready to bring you coverage of the Tim Hortons Canadian Curling Trials, which is also presented here on the RP Show by Core Grain. Hey, uh, Moose, how are things at Mission Control of Great Western Brewing Company? They are awesome, Rod. Um, I don't know how my hair is because I just took the hairnet off, but uh, it's pretty good. We just went on the tour, got to see how everything worked. We'll get some photos. I got some videos that Jordan got in there. Um, we'll get more live shots throughout the week from inside the brewery, but uh, things are great. They're excited to have us. Oh, good, good. Well, I have to tell you this. For our viewers, got all set up here hours ago here in South Florida, and just before we went to show Moose, my screen just froze. Do you know that feeling uh, when Ooh. you've got too many windows open and your computer just says, I'm out? Uh, that happened yeah. moments ago. So I got, a, I got it back going here. And but I don't have the comments rolling yet. So just tell for folks, I'll tell you, just bear with me and we'll get to your comments here in a moment in the warm up for E. Cole Electric. And uh, Moose, if you don't mind, let's get rolling. Director Jordan, can you hit the quick six show horn, please? Thank you. Uh, we do have a little bit of something for everybody here in the warm up. But I'm going to start with the National Football League and our team's moose coming out of week 11 Sunday games. Clyde Edwards Hilaire ran for 63 yards and a touchdown in his return from injured reserve. Chris Jones 
and the Kansas City defense made life miserable for Dakota Prescott and the Kansas City Chiefs beat Dallas 19-9. If that was a Super Bowl preview, I'm not interested. Again, Dallas losing in Kansas City 19-9, and they slept walk through much of the game. My take, the Dallas Cowboys are not a Super Bowl contender as we sit here today. Your Tennessee Titans, however, Tyrod Taylor ran for two touchdowns and threw for 107 yards, and Houston snapped the NFL's longest active losing skid, beating Tennessee to end the league's longest winning streak. What was it, 22? Uh, I wrote it down here, 22-13. Desmond King had two of the Texans, four interceptions. Three of them came in the fourth quarter. Moose, I'm not telling you anything you don't know. But your Titans are now 8-3. and three. Their six-game win streak is snapped, and I would – I've said what I think about the Cowboys. I would say your Titans have some splaining to do, losing to that god-awful, whatever they are, masquerading as a pro football team. It was a case of everything that could go wrong did go wrong, you know, for Tennessee yesterday. Um, you know, it started, they drove down the field all the way into the red zone or just outside the red zone, and then an interception taken almost to the house, but then they punched it in for a touchdown. There was a punt. Chester Rogers was fielding the punt. At the inside the five yard line, he got out of the way, hit his heel. They picked it up, scored a touchdown. So I mean, it wasn't as bad as as getting beat by Houston as much as it was mistakes. But here's what I'll say for your Cowboys and my Titans: it shouldn't be panic mode because Dallas is without their top two receivers, their starting left tackle, two of their best defensive linemen, you know, including Demarcus Lawrence. So Dallas is dealing with injuries, but so is Tennessee. No Derrick Henry, AJ Brown didn't finish the game. Julio Jones is out. Nobody's had more man games lost to injury than Tennessee. Nobody's had more active players in and out of the lineup than Tennessee. So that part is really tough, but you can't lose to the Houston Texans, man. The Houston Texans. So it was, it, it's been a rough uh, 24 hours. Yeah, so, so both of our teams, who we thought were Super Bowl favorites, really stubbed their toe on Sunday. Anyways, moving on. Uh, the Moose is live from the Great Western Brewing Company. They're presenting our Tim Hortons Canadian Curling Trials coverage along with Core Grain. You see, I packed my Core Grain golf shirt. Doing the right thing for your farm. Um, Jennifer Jones and Tracy Fleury remain undefeated at the Canadian Olympic Curling Trials at Sastel Center. Jones improved to 3-0 with an 8-7 extra end win over Laura Walker in Sunday's late draw. And Fleury moved to 2-0 with an 8-6 victory over Kelsey Rock. The curling trials will determine which teams represent Canada at the Winter Olympics in Beijing. For those that don't know, this is a big deal. And they continue today with two draws. Brad Gushu takes his undefeated 2-0 record into a clash with John Epping. The uh, also unbeaten Brad Jacobs takes on winless Brendan Botcher. In the women's evening draw, 3-0, Jennifer Jones meets Casey Scheidegger, and Rachel Holman faces Kelsey Rock with both rinks looking for their first wins. Moose, you, uh, after we talked this morning, threatened that you were going down to Sastel Center briefly before the show. Did you end up making it, or are you waiting until after the program today? I'm going to go after the show. I did the brewery tour this morning instead, but I was watching last night, a lot of it actually, and you know the late one with Jennifer Jones, went to an extra end and she kind of escaped with the win because it was there was a heavy stone and they were sweeping it early they just completely misjudged it in the extra end so she uh ended up stealing one in the extra but uh that brendan botcher game with brad jacobs today is going to be really interesting brendan botcher right coming off the win at the uh at the uh the briar but he's owen too so that's a little bit of a shock our girl rachel holman's owen too uh but she'll she'll snap out of that and same with our, our boys matt dunstone 0-2 to start without Braden Muscawi. So uh, it's been a fun uh, uh, opening couple of days, and I'm looking to get to the rink here this afternoon. Good stuff. Well, uh, I was traveling yesterday, so I didn't get to watch much NFL, but I was able to watch on my phone a lot of the curling trials, courtesy TSN. So thank you, TSN. Anyways, moving on to point three and his NHL from Sunday. Defenseman Ryan Lindgren barely beat the third-period buzzer to lift the New York Rangers to a 5-4 victory over the Buffalo Sabres Sunday night in Manhattan. Steven Stamko scored the lone shootout goal, while Brian Elliott stopped three shootout shots to give Tampa Bay a 5-4 win over Minnesota after blowing a late two-goal lead. Marc-Andre Fleury stopped 40 shots in his first shutout of the season to give Chicago a 1-0 win over Vancouver. Jaden Schwartz had a goal and three helpers, and the Seattle Kraken beat the Washington Capitals 5-2 to snap a six-game losing streak. The Kraken going to be here Saturday night in Sunrise. 
Former Bruins goalie Dan Vladar stopped 27 shots for his second career shutout. Andrew Mangiapane scored a shorthanded goal in the third period. And Calgary beat Boston 4-0 for its seventh shutout in 19 games. And I'm so happy, Moose, that those Flames fans that asked if Jacob Markstrom and Vladar were a flash in the pan, I very confidently said, no, they're not. These goalies are that good. But it's the commitment to defense. I think we know enough about hockey that it's not just about the goalies. This is Daryl Sutter hockey. And I'm glad that they're very excited in Calgary about the play of the Flames. And the other game from Sunday, Mitch Marner scored twice. And Joseph Wall stopped 20 shots for his first career shutout as Toronto beat the New York Islanders 3-0. Now, our poll question today for Capital Automall Universal Collision Center is, sorry to take Moose off the graphic here, but uh, or maybe they're not going to, uh, which is fine. Can There you go. For Capital Automall Universal Collision Center, that's the poll question today. Can the New York Islanders overcome this 5-8-2 start and make the playoffs. And I believe it was producer Clark that came up with that in our morning meeting, if I'm not mistaken, Clark, right? Great question. It's really got it's really got people talking. And let me just pull up the Twitter results. Uh, 63% of respondents on Twitter say, yes, the Islanders can overcome this 5-8-2 and two start and, and make the playoffs. Darren, I got to say this, and I'll get your take. It's only three games below 500. I watched the Islanders play at Florida the other night in their last game of 13 straight on the road, they had nothing left. And I saw, because Clark alerted me to it, Islanders fans this morning burning their jerseys in burning barrels in New York because the Islanders have lost six in a row. Come on, man. 13 straight on the road to open this season before they got into their new arena, which this weekend they opened up with back-to-back blowout home losses. This is a team that went to Game 7 of the Eastern Conference Final last year only to lose to the defending Stanley Cup champion. The Islanders are still that good, but that's my take. Uh, what's yours? I My take is I don't know. I, I think I need more time because of that 13-game swing on the road and now back in a new building. I did think getting home into the new building would be enough for them to, you know, have a little extra and then play a little bit better. But the two losses in that new building are a little bit concerning. The, the only, the big thing for me that's concerning, because we've seen, everybody wants to go back and talk about St. Louis being in last place and in January and then getting up into the Stanley Cup and winning the Stanley Cup. But the only thing for me with the Islanders that will make it difficult is they are in that really, really tough division. There are so many good teams in the division that if you get behind, you know, it's going to be really hard to get back on top and to overtake some of these teams ahead of them. So, um, they're not out of the woods, um, but it's not over yet either. Way too early for that. So, But it's the division, the tough division for me. That's the biggest concern. Again, this is the warm-up presented by Ecold Electric. It's the Golden Corral of Sports Talk. We have a little bit of something for everybody. My cousin Christine is watching in Medicine Hat, and she points out the Raptors one win and one loss over the weekend. Yes, Chris, stay tuned for the sports update because I will recap that. Clark's dad is watching Rod Monroe, and he says, hey, Rod, how about those Colts? How about those Colts? They are killing everybody by double digits. I don't know where that came from, but if you let's just say that uh, coming out of training camp, they said Carson Wentz was going to be gone for 12 weeks. Remember with that foot injury? Uh-uh. I saw him live with my own two eyes here in Miami. The Indianapolis Colts are a real deal. And Rod Monroe, I didn't know that you were that big of a fan. So enjoy the ride. Uh, Clay Bombing is watching in Brandon, Manitoba. By the way, I got the comments to work, as you can tell, Moose. Clay says, the Canada West final with dumps. uh, Dumps. That's a good one. With dupes (laughs) and dunk was awesome Can that nickname not stick, please? Dumps. I like it. It's when the two are you together. Here comes dumps. Um... Hang on, that's actually my sixth point, the Hardy Cup, and all the university quarterfinals across this country. But I'm, I'm still rolling here. Again, it's the warm-up for E. Cole Electric. I'm in South Florida. Moose is at the Great Western Brewery in Saskatoon as part of our Tim Hortons Curling Trials coverage. I do want to talk about CFL Week 16, and we got plenty of time here left in this segment to talk about it as we roll ahead to the semifinal weekend this upcoming weekend. Um, I'll read the scores. Ottawa, a surprise in Montreal, 
winning Friday night, 1918. That eliminated the Alouettes. It gave Hamilton second place without Hamilton even having to take the field the next day. It frankly eliminated any of the drama going into week 16. The only drama that was left, the Red Blacks killed it. Uh, Edmonton was blown out in BC 43-10. So a bit of a nice thing for the Lions to end the season. Snapped, what was it, a seven-game losing streak, I think. Then on Saturday, Saskatchewan lost in Hamilton 24-3. But for a late field goal, Saskatchewan would have been blown out. And uh, Winnipeg fell at Calgary 13-12. There is a football scout in the States, probably watching right now, that did text me yesterday and said, Rod, is this, are the CFL games less entertaining? Is the entertainment value declining? And I said, I don't want to get into that right now. This is semifinal weekend. The CFL, COVID or not, generally shines come playoff time. Darren, uh, Darren, you and I have talked about that in the past. Semifinal weekend, division final weekend, the Grey Cup, usually great games. Stadiums, usually full. Ratings, usually high. But I'm not going to say that the entertainment level hasn't declined. That Winnipeg game I just mentioned, Four field goals by Sergio Castillo Saturday night at McMahon Stadium in Calgary. Four field goals. That was all they did for scoring. But three field goals for the Dallas Cowboys yesterday in the 19-9 loss at Kansas City. So I don't necessarily think this is a CFL thing. There are some games that are dogs. But I just feel that right now isn't the time to have that discussion. What say you? Yeah, it's not. I, I agree. I think the uh, Canadian Football League is going to be really exciting in the playoffs. We've talked about that. I know you and I are going to be dialed into it, so that's really exciting. And we were talking about this in the weekend. And I don't think it's a Canadian football thing because the Hardy Cup, university football has been outstanding. It's been so entertaining back and forth. It's been what the CFL used to be, you know, prior to this year. So I, I hope this is just a one-year bump in the road, an anomaly but it's just a CFL issue. It is not a Canadian football issue. Canadian football is very entertaining. Oh, the warm-up brought to you by Ecole Electric. As always, come see our sales staff and in-house specialists for all your electrical needs. I'm going to pause. Uh, when we come back, we're going to take a little bit more of a look at the CFL playoffs. Also talk about the Hardy Cup from Saturday, which Darren called the Yates Cup with Western moving on and the Loney Bowl with St. Francis Xavier moving on out in the Atlantic Conference. But let's get to the photo album and the time that we have left for the weekend here. RP Show photo album presented by Great Western Brewing. Extra smooth, extra refreshing. Find Original 16 at a store near you today. So there you go. Oh, that's me. Okay. So they wanted the weekend photos. That was from yesterday. And that was a nice sight at the Tirana Airport heading back to South Florida. That's, the, that's all I had. That's all I could give. Now, this so is, this is you, Moose. Explain. Explain. Yeah, this is this is game day morning. Hardy Cup in Saskatoon on the weekend. Uh, beautiful Saskatoon. That that stadium is awesome for university football. Uh, and then the game. So we'll get the game shot up here. This was in the middle of the game. Got this shot in. Great crowd. Uh, the weather was actually pretty good. It was sunny. Wind picked up later uh, in the game as it got a little cooler. But just an awesome place for for university football in this country. There's our crew. That's the, the people behind the scenes. You can see Dan Plaster. You'll see that second from the right with me and Justin Dunk and Dave Roberts and Chantel Shand and uh, Dave Thomas and um, Doug McLean and Rusty and Todd and uh, everybody else. And then this is, uh, this is from the Delta this morning. Uh, this is the view from the hotel. Uh, we're right downtown by the river. So big thanks to the Delta Marriott downtown Saskatoon for hosting us and helping us uh, provide this great coverage from uh, Saskatoon. And there's, you got to blow that one up, I think or zoom it out because that's the original 16 founders. we got to get them all in there. Um, there you go. There's the shot. Um, that's right here in the brewery. That's up on the wall. They're really proud of uh, those guys and girls. So uh, I think that's the last shot. So uh, that's my weekend. Yes, absolutely. Quite a weekend. That's the photo album for Great Western Brewing Company. Great Western, extra smooth, extra refreshing. Find original 16 at a store near you today. We'll delve more deeply into the CFL semifinal weekend upcoming because it's upon us. The betting lines are out from Bet Regal. We'll talk more about these university football games, uh, the conference championships on the weekend. We'll be right back. You are watching the RP Show on the Game Plus Television Network, live streaming on YouTube and 24-hour sports radio at rodpeterson.com. Head to youtube.com slash the Rod Peterson Show now. 
you gotta subscribe. Click the subscribe button for all the content you may have missed. Comfort has always been something we, as people, strive for. It means that the places we live and work, and that the people we care most about, are able to go about their lives focusing on the things that matter. Our focus at FlameTech has remained the same for more than 20 years. Now more than ever, we need each other to support our local businesses. As an industry leader in combustion services, we are proud to attend to the needs of our communities and support the local economy. Safety is a primary pillar at Core Green. We have core certification. Our workers are following best practices in the industry for safety. We always want to make sure that our contractors, us here at the shop, and our customers can come to work and go home at the end of every day. Give Core Green Systems a call today. Your family needs a break. Delta Hotel Saskatoon welcomes you to our newly renovated hotel and water park. You deserve a vacation close to home. Enjoy world-class hospitality and upscale surroundings. Rediscover Saskatoon. You can enjoy time away from home right in your own city. The kids will love the water slide. Delta Hotels Saskatoon downtown. All the essentials and then some. I started the Shallow Lacrosse Academy three years ago. Um, and my main goal for the province of Saskatchewan was to spread the game and the awareness of lacrosse. Jeff Shatler here, number 77 with the Saskatchewan Rush. I currently play forward, 16 years pro. I live, work, and play in the province of Saskatchewan. Direct West's mission is to grow Saskatchewan economy by helping small local businesses win with digital advertising services, but they are also a major supporter of local sport, art, and charitable organizations. Year after year, Direct West continues to put their money where their mouth is and ensuring the minor sports and art and music festivals can continue to thrive in our province. They continue to do all they can to promote our communities and assist nonprofit charitable organizations in the effort to improve the quality of life in the province of Saskatchewan. I am proud to work with Direct West and call the province of Saskatchewan my home. This holiday season, wish your way at Capital Ford Lincoln. Unwrap a completely customized vehicle ordering experience. Reserve a pre-ordered unit that's already on its way. Or get into a pre-owned vehicle that's on the lot and ready to roll. And don't forget, we pay big for your used vehicle, even if you don't buy from us. Plus, our service department is your winter headquarters. Get special pricing on name brand tires, storage, maintenance, and more. And we always offer free vehicle pickup and delivery. This holiday season, wish your way at Capital Ford Lincoln. Hey, Rod Squad, now you can join the team with your very own RP Show gear. Head to rodpetersonshop.com and get yours today while supplies last. It's just like we wear on the show, official RP Show gear at rodpetersonshop.com. Hey, honey, can you get one of the kids to show me how this Twitter thing works? Honey, I need to get on Instagram. Time for more of the Rod Peterson Show. Welcome back, everybody. The RP Show continues on this Monday, episode number 616 of Canada's daytime sports talk show coming to you from my end, South Florida. Moose is at the Great Western Brewery in Saskatoon. We'll be joining up with him shortly. And while uh, we await Darren's return, we'll jump into the sports update, as I promised earlier. Jordan Poole and Andrew Wiggins combined for 65 points, and the Golden State Warriors beat the Toronto Raptors 119-104. Pascal Siakam scored 21, and Fred Van Vliet had 17 for the Raps. Toronto was dropped 15 of the last 17 at Golden State. Toronto continues their six-game road trip Wednesday at Memphis. Justin Herbert threw a 53-yard touchdown pass to Mike Williams late in the game, and the L.A. Chargers held off the Pittsburgh Steelers 41-37. Herbert threw for 382 yards and three touchdowns. He also had 90 yards rushing. The most by a Chargers quarterback in a game. Ben Roethlisberger threw three touchdowns for Pittsburgh. 
and our curling coverage for Core Grain doing the right thing for your farm and for Great Western Brewing Company. Jennifer Jones and Tracy Fleury remain undefeated at Canada's Olympic curling trials in Saskatoon. Jones improved to 3-0 and with an 8-7 extra end win over Laura Walker in Sunday's late draw. And Fleury moved to 2-0 and with an 8-6 victory over Kelsey Rock. The curling trials determine which teams represent Canada at the Winter Olympics in Beijing. The sports update for, for Ballers Rec Room. Check out our brand new line of games. Book your group or business Christmas party now for the Tap Brew House and Drive Through Liquor Store and for Red Bull Canada. Red Bull gives you wings. I mentioned that we were going to talk about the CFL playoffs, and we will in this second segment. But the Moose has rejoined us in Saskatoon where he called Saturday's Hardy Cup. I watched it, Darren. Great job, Saskatchewan Huskies. Really tearing apart Manitoba 45-17, but it was a four-point game at halftime. So I want you to explain what you thought worked so well for the Huskies in the second half. And for our Eastern viewers, in the Yates Cup, Western Mustangs blew out Queens 29-0. And in the Loney Bowl, St. FX defeated Bishops 25-17. So what was your experience calling the Hardy Cup? You'll like this. Your friend Perry will like this, or our friend. Um, Mason Nias, the Huskies quarterback, I think showed a lot of resiliency in the game. I mean, he threw an interception. There was a couple of mistakes, and all of a sudden Manitoba was up 16 nothing. But that happened last year. So, you know, in 2019, when they went into Calgary and lost 29-4, to Mason started that game, and they were favored to win, the Huskies were. And he ran into some problems. And whether it was inexperience or whatever, they couldn't get out of their own way. Calgary won. Well, this game, completely different. They took a couple of shots uh, early and, and were down. But then Mason just stayed patient. Adam Mackart, the all-star, kept running the football well. He had over 200 yards total on the ground. Um, and they just did the little things well. Colton Kloss and Sam Baker. And their defense is really good, too. Manitoba was unfortunately you know, playing a, a rookie quarterback. And Jackson Tachinsky, who had been playing all year, and he had done such a great job. But in this game, they were just a little bit overmatched. The Huskies were a better team. The future looks really bright for the Bisons moving forward. They should get Des Catelier back next year. But Saskatchewan is physical. They go after the football. They got a linebacker, Nick Weeb, who last year in January was playing in the Fiesta Bowl with the Oregon Ducks. Transferred back home. He's now with the, with the Huskies, starring on that defense. They're very, very good, and uh, they just continued to play well, stuck to the game plan, and uh, and it was a dominating win for the Huskies. They're going to be a very good team next week against the Montreal Carabans, the number one team in the country. Um, some people think the Huskies should be ranked number one, so that'll be a good game. They got a really strong shot at a Vanier Cup. They appear to be the real deal. So uh, thank you for yeah. the update. Now, the text line is open. You can write us all hours of the day at 902-518-3033. The text line to the RP Show. DG writes in from Saskatoon, says, Morning, guys. Things looking good for an all-Canadian Super Bowl. The LA Chargers have a roster with two CFL alums in Ty Long and Tavon Campbell, plus four other Canadians, Covington, Palmer, Ogbong, Bamiga, and Hunter. Tops in the NFC are the Arizona Cardinals, who feature coach Cliff Kingsbury, GM Steve Keim, and backup quarterback Chris Strebler, all CFL alums. As well, there is a connection with Kyle Nelson, whose dad Mark and Grandpa Roger both played in the CFL too. Pretty cool. Signed, DG in Saskatoon. Well, this is just the most important time of the year in Canadian football. And if it was a normal year, we'd be heading into Grey Cup Weekend, it's not a normal year because of COVID. Obviously, we're just heading into semifinal weekend this year, and that's what I'd like to talk about right now, Darren. I don't know if you've had a chance or if you saw the commentary this morning at rodpeterson.com that the betregal.net betting lines are out. And for Hamilton, home to Montreal, Eastern semifinal. For betregal.net, the Ticats are favored by four. And in the Western semifinal, it is the Calgary Stampeders at the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. And Saskatchewan's favored by 1.5. And my initial thought on that was, come on, bet Regal odds makers, get off the fence. 1.5 is nothing. I mean, like, what do you think about, about those betting lines? No. 
No, oh, we lost the moose. Oh, we'll get him back. We'll get him back. I'm just, uh, 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 and we lost the comments here too. Internet issues. Well, let's see. I can handle this while we uh, maintain or reestablish connection with the moose at the Great Western Brewery in Saskatoon. On the Saskatchewan thing, Riders losing 24-3 to at Hamilton on Saturday. Yeah, they didn't play their best game. Isaac Harker throwing two interceptions in a losing cause. Saw Mason Fines come in after Harker started. And um, I, my phone was blowing up from Rider fans that were very upset. I think just with the fact that they lost. They were talking about bad, bad tackling. The interceptions, obviously, from Isaac Harker and that he hasn't earned a new contract once this season is up. And Darren has rejoined us. We'll bring him in here. Um, Darren, I, I just don't think in any way, shape, or form should the Ryder fans be worried about Saskatchewan's performance in the last game of the year, a game where they left their quarterback at home, their best receiver at home. Uh, I don't know your thoughts on that, but I just I don't think that is in any way an indication as to how they're no. going to come out on this weekend when they host the Calgary Stampeders. Yeah, I shouldn't be worried about it. For me, when I read that that line of 1.5, I'm like, the odds makers aren't really sure what to do with this game. You know, <sighs> Saskatchewan, they're a higher seed, so you want to make them the betting favorite. And it's not about who the – let's remember this. It's not about who the odds makers think – is going to win the game or who is favored to win and, and who's the better team as much as it's about what line do we set that entices betters to bet on both sides of this thing. So I think there's a lot of value for Calgary because they played so well against Saskatchewan in the regular season, especially as of late, they seem to have gotten their game together. So in a lot of, you know, ways and areas, Calgary should be favored in this football game, but it's in Saskatchewan. Saskatchewan has some experience. They, still have weapons, you know, they've rested some starters, sure, but they're very capable and they're the high seed. They've earned it. So they maybe they should be favored. So it kind of flits in the middle at 1.5. I think you're going to have some people saying, okay, I think Saskatchewan can win this by two or more points. And you'll have a lot of people saying, I think Calgary can win at that, this football game. So it should balance out the betting. That's the goal of the odds. But um, yeah, it's a tough one. It just seems like just because they finished ahead and, and are at home, We'll make Saskatchewan the favorite because we should, but Calgary could easily be 1.5 or three-point favorites too. Either way, it's a close uh, margin. Well, I think if anybody gets into the betting lines, you'll be hearing it this week amongst your friends, not yours, Darren, but the viewers. If people talk about betting and your CFL fans, you're going to hear this. Well, the home team always gets 3.5 points. I just heard it not that long ago, that automatically the home team gets 3.5. So if Bet Regal's installed... Uh, Saskatchewan is 1.5 favorites, and the odds makers must think Calgary's the better team coming in. What did Johnny Avello tell us from DraftKings? He's like, where did that come from, that 3.5 home? He goes, no, that's not a thing. Do you agree with him? I mean, he's an odds maker. Yeah. So I would tend to agree with him. But um, yeah. I think you just kind of laid it out well there that this is to entice people to make the bet. But I also want to say something, too, by the way, before you jump in on that. I'm feeling pretty good about my CFL West Division predictions. I had uh, Winnipeg first, and they romped. They had it sewn up a month ago. Saskatchewan second, Calgary third. And then I had the Edmonton Elks fourth, BC Lions fifth. And all you got to do is swap them, and I was right on. You look at the way their records ended. Edmonton three and 11, BC Lions five and nine. Both teams stunned that they're missing the playoffs and we're so bad. First time in almost a decade there hasn't been a crossover, Darren. And I'm feeling pretty good that I had Saskatchewan picked for eight wins. They finished with nine. And it's a Western Canadian-based talk show, so uh, we'll leave it out there. Your thoughts on how this regular season concluded in the CFL West? Yeah, for sure. Um, what we saw is rookie head coaches struggle a little bit. You know, our first-year head coaches with new teams, young coaches uh, struggle a little bit, and that maybe should have been expected a little more than we than it was. Um, yeah, BC was a was a surprise. They had a really good stretch in the middle of the year, and I'm like, okay, this team's for real. Um, they're going to be great cup contenders, and then that didn't happen. You know, Edmonton 
we thought that roster was looking really good. You know, we thought they were going to be a very good football team. Didn't turn out. Calgary, the other way, not dominating. That was a shock. Um, but Winnipeg, not a surprise. Saskatchewan, where they are, not a surprise. Thought they'd have a few more, it'd be a little more convincing. That's why Ryder fans are upset. They're not quite convinced that this team is 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 great, but we know they're good. Um, and then out east, I mean, Hamilton, we thought they would be dominant, really dominant. One of the best teams in the Canadian Football League. They haven't been top to bottom, start to finish. And be, they're in the dance. Um and it's just been a tough year for Ottawa. So no, it's been a, it's been really good. I don't think there, it's it's overly uh, wild the way things finished, but uh, some surprises. By the way, back to our poll question for a moment. And producer Clark, please let me know when I need to break, and we'll get Tim Peel in our next guest today. Oh, anytime. Okay. Um, you know what, Moose? I'm going to let you go. I'll get to. Joe Lazito's comment, the biggest Islanders fan who watches the show. I'll get to that after the break. Our poll question today for Capital Auto Mall Universal Collision Center is, can the Islanders overcome this 5-8-2 and two start and make the playoffs? And at the moment, on Twitter, 61% of you saying, yes, they can. Do you have the YouTube results, Clark, or no? So, and put me down as a yes, by the way, that 61%. How many? 70 70% saying yes, YouTube voters, that yes, the Islanders can overcome this. Joel ozito has got thoughts. We'll get to that a little later on. We'll take a pause, and when we come back, retired NHL referee Tim Peel. Chats with refs are always great. That's coming up next. You're watching the RP Show on the Game Plus Television Network, YouTube, live streaming, and 24-hour sports radio at rodpeterson.com. Have you subscribed to the Rod Peterson Show YouTube channel yet? Head to youtube.com slash the Rod Peterson Show now. Nestled in the scenic Quapel Valley, just 20 minutes northwest of Regina, is one of the finest golf courses in all of Saskatchewan, the Deer Valley Golf Club. The clubhouse has a full-service restaurant, and customers can enjoy a casual dining experience with spectacular views of the golf course and valley. A fully stocked golf shop staffed by PGA of Canada professionals is equipped to meet all of your golf apparel and equipment needs. Book your tee time, family event, or corporate tournament today at the Deer Valley Golf Club. Call 306-731-1445. Don't rack your brain trying to source the equipment and materials you need for your business. Rockstar can operate your entire supply chain, from PO creation to expediting your shipments, all from our office. Leverage the buying power of the Rockstar Buying Group to not only save money and time, but also the headache. From gloves to glue, we can provide it for you. Find out more at rockstar.com. Universal Collision Center is Saskatchewan's premier auto body shop. Our extensive process ensures that every vehicle that comes through our state-of-the-art facilities is returned pre-accident condition and that every UCC customer experience is an easy one. We're certified to repair all makes, all models, and all luxury brands, and Universal Auto Spa offers full-service detailing packages to suit you and your vehicle. Plus, we're the official body shop of your Saskatchewan Rough Riders. Universal Collision Center, 3910 Rochdale Boulevard and 2355 First Avenue in Regina. Does this look familiar? Your fans deserve an incredible arena experience. It's time for an upgrade. Stunning graphics. Revenue opportunities are just the beginning with our in-venue display systems and scoring technology. Let us help you find the best solution for your facility. DDG, always delivering the best fan experience. Addiction. It destroys relationships, families, and lives. It makes individuals and the people who love them feel powerless. But the good news is that addiction is a treatable illness. At Aurora Recovery Center, we provide everything you need to build a solid foundation for your recovery with holistic, evidence-based treatment tailored to each individual. Located in Gimli, Manitoba, on the shores of Lake Winnipeg, Aurora can help regardless of whether or not you feel ready or have tried before. Aurora Recovery Center, 
recovery for life. Visit auroracoverycenter.com for more information today. Business owners and marketers. Okay, we know you think we're pretty cool. That's why we want you to share in the coolness factor. Partner with the Rod Peterson Show and market your business every weekday to sports lovers just like yourself. Take advantage of our many cost-effective commercial and promotional opportunities. Tell the world about your business. Yes, the world. Thanks to Game Plus TV and the Rod Peterson Digital Network. Contact us today and find out how you can be a part of Canada's fastest-growing sports talk show, The Rod Peterson Show. Did you know you can catch all the best moments from the show on all our social media platforms? Now back to the studio with Rod. Welcome back to the RP Show, everybody. Brand new week opening up here. Uh, episode number 616 of Canada's Daytime Sports Talk Show, ironically broadcasting from South Florida, where the Panthers are home Wednesday night to the Philly Flyers, and uh, I'll be there. Our next guest is Tim Peel. His Twitter bio says retired NHL referee, rules analyst at dailyfaceoff.com in mortgage broker in St. Louis, Missouri. And it is a pleasure to welcome Tim Peel to the program today. Tim, thanks for the time. Good to see you, my man. And uh, if you don't mind, I'm going to open up. I'm going to open up right here. Yeah, with our poll question. And I, and I don't know how comfortable you are with answering it as an impartial referee, but can the New York Islanders come back from this 5-8-2 and two start in that Metropolitan Division and make the playoff? I think they do. They're, they First of all, they have one of the best GMs in the league in Lou Lamorello. Wherever he goes, he wins. And Barry Trott is really an incredible coach. First of all, he was I, – I, last year towards the end of my season, I wasn't going to see the Islanders again. And I said – I went over to the bench and I said, Trott, see, and the, whole, the, player, the bench was listening. And I said – I would referee you guys 82 games a year. He goes, why is that to me? And I go, you never hear a peep from him. You never hear a peep from the bench. They are so disciplined and structured. And all they think of, they, the, the officials are the last thing that they're thinking about. And they're just, they, you know, they started two weeks on the road or three weeks on the road. That's really difficult. And they're back in a new building, but then they've got a bunch of players on COVID protocol. And I think that it, I think we'll see over the next 30 to 45 days once they get some players back. I wouldn't be surprised at all if I saw them go on a seven and one run, an eight and two run. They're just too good of a team and too well structured. Yeah, and only three games below 500. Not only me, am I shocked at the. The discussion, I'm shocked that Islanders fans are burning their jerseys and burning barrels. That's the photos we've seen on Instagram. And by the way, I guess you would be a perfect guy to ask. Those Islanders fans seem a little unstable at times. Who, Tim, in your mind, having worked in every NHL arena multiple times, has the not un most unstable but craziest fans, most rabid fans? Well, have, did you ever go to the old building in Long Island? No, one County of the few. Coliseum. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, the, it's it's separated. The Marriott is separated by a parking lot, and that's where all the fans would tailgate. And I had an afternoon game there once. Uh, it was a Saturday afternoon. Pittsburgh was in town. It was in the first or second round of the playoffs. Went into overtime, and I gave Pittsburgh a power play in overtime. Sidney Crosby got hooked or tripped. And, of course, Pittsburgh scores in the power play. Now, we have to walk across the parking lot to go back to our hotel. And we needed a police escort to get us back. And, and I can't even repeat what some of the fans were saying, but it was pretty, it was pretty uh, uh, bad. But you know what? I'm trying to think of, you know, all the Canadian cities that I worked in, you know, I loved working in the Canadian cities because, they were such knowledgeable hockey fans. And I remember going to Atlanta when Atlanta was there. And just because a player fell, the fans would boo and they'd carry on. The Canadian hockey fans are some of the most smartest hockey fans in the league. And so, I, I, you know what? All of them, I like all of them. A lot of, a lot of people didn't like working in Philadelphia. I loved working in Philadelphia. You know, we, we know the story where they, they snowballed uh, – Santa Claus at the Eagles game years ago, and they're known to be unruly fans. But I got I I 
really developed a good relationship with the fans there over the years. And I liked working in all the buildings. You know, speaking of what you're enjoying now, uh, I'd ask you how retirement life is. And then I will ask you that, but seeing you go back and forth with the media on explaining rules calls to the media or fans or whomever needs it seems to be a real thrill for you, Tim. And I'm sure it is. I think was it Ken Campbell from the Hockey News you were clarifying on the weekend? I think it was Ken Campbell. He couldn't understand an Correct. offside call, and you you pointed it out, uh, which I think is infinitely entertaining. You can make a full time job out of correcting people on Twitter on NHL rules. Yeah, it's it's remarkable. And even when I was on the ice, I would hear announcers uh, talk about a certain play and or a certain call, and 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 it's no fault of their own, but well, maybe it is, but most of them don't know the rules and the fans certainly don't understand the nuances of the rules. And that offside play was, was a, a, a different play. It wasn't black and white. And you know, I, I enjoy it because I'm not, listen, if our officials mess up, I'll, I'll go on Twitter and say they got the call wrong. But in instances where not only did the linesman get the call right, but after hockey ops looked at the play in Toronto, they deemed that it was a good uh, a good goal and that the play was off onside. So uh, it's 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 not to be uh, hey I'm right and because I'm going to make mistakes. But there are a lot of most of the fans and a lot of the media will tell you that they don't know the rules, and that's why we have a rules expert on ESPN now. That's why we have a rules expert on TNT. Uh, I'm doing it with Frank Cervelli at, at Daily Faceoff. I think you're going to see more of that because people, you know, especially during hockey games, whether it's hockey night in Canada, and we talk about the power play and we talk about the penalty kill, a lot of fans kind of tune out when that comes on. But I think if they had an official on there that explained why a call was made, why it was missed, maybe there were three or four bodies in front of the ref. He didn't get a good sight line on it. You know, our guys are human. And for whatever reason, hockey officials seem to get beat up the most out of any sport. There's no doubt in my mind. I'm just, I'm going, I, you're probably right. And, and I, I answer this to the best you can, Tim, but I just wonder what referees think about video replay, just the existence of it, let alone how far it's come. For instance, I'm watching Jets and Oilers the other night in Winnipeg. My good friend, Chris Schlenker, former captain of the Regina Pats. I called their games for 15 years. No goal, goaltender interference. Dave Tippett challenges. They overturn it, and it's a goal. If you know the one, I don't know if you know the one I'm talking about, Dreisaitl uh, yep. on the five-on-four power yep. play. And I thought, mm-hmm. man, it's just – it's it's correcting refs' mistakes and, for lack of a better term, making them look bad even though nobody's perfect. How do the officials feel about the advent of video replay and the way it's being used now in the NHL? No, that's a good question, Rod. You know, I, I, I re- you're absolutely right about uh, making the refs feel bad. I would say that was – not that the league was trying to make us look bad, but as an official, I would feel bad and I would feel embarrassed when they first brought it in that I couldn't get the the correct call in real time and that it took somebody to dissect it and look at it in Toronto to get the call right. But I remember I was doing a game in, in New York at Madison Square Gardens one night and I missed a goalie interference call on Henrik Lundqvist and, and it was the, the, the deciding goal. This is before we had video review. And everybody thinks, you know, I felt terrible after the game. They lost the game 3-2. I felt terrible. And everybody thinks the officials just go back to the hotel and have a couple beers and forget about it. But that wasn't the case. Uh, it bothered me for three or four days. I had that pit in my stomach. So when they brought it in, and certainly the last few years, it's nothing but good for the game because it's so funny when quite often the official gets it wrong on the ice. They go to Toronto. They get off the headset, they go after further review, the goal uh, counts, doesn't count, whatever. And even though the official got the call wrong originally, quite often the first thing that the announcer says was, good job on the officials, they got the call right. And at the end of the day, that's all we want. Because we do not want, you know, we've got, we we brought in uh, offside challenges a few years ago because we had a couple goals in the playoffs that were offside and determine the outcome of the game. And at the end of the day, we just want to get the call right. And I don't know if you remember the play in 2019 when the Blues won the Cup 
and it was game mm -hmm. three or four in St. Louis against the San hooking Jose. in the offensive zone, the hooking in the offensive zone on Tyler Bozak no, when they no. called the go back. Oh, it was the hand pass by Timo Meyer in overtime to a fellow shark player and they put it in the net and the game ended, you know, San Jose went ahead in that series and I was a standby official for that game and we're watching it on the, on the TV in the room. And I'm like, this is not good. And everybody in the stadium can see it. They're looking at it on the jumbotron. Everybody from China to the, to North America is able to see the review, the replay, all the coaches, all the players are looking at the replay on the bench, but the only four p people that in the world that couldn't see the replay were the four officials on the ice. And that's when the league that summer said, you know what, we need to change some things because we can't have games ending like this. And, and I will say three of the four of those officials that were working that game had all done prior Stanley Cups. They were very good officials. They just made a mistake. They just missed it. And that, that happens. So video replay is good for our, our game. And, uh, you know, it's frustrating sometimes when a goal is scored in, in, in the home building and the fans are going crazy and then all of a sudden it's reviewed and it, it, it's taken away. Kind of sucks the energy out of the building. But at the end of the day, like I said earlier, it, as long as we get it right, it's good for the game. Everybody says that, and I agree. Tim, I've loved the discussion. Hope we can do it again soon. Glad you're doing so well. Sounds good, Rod. I, I when you when I came on, I said that does not look like Saskatchewan in the background. So I'm glad you clarified that with me. Sunrise, Florida, the best you've been. You know what I'm talking about. Good Thanks to you. Thanks for having me on. Well, retired NHL official Tim Peel joining us from St. Louis today. When we come back, Taco Time viewer takeover. You're watching the RP show from South Florida on the Game Plus Television Network, YouTube Live, and 24 Hour Sports Radio at rodpeterson.com. Have you subscribed to the Rod Peterson Show YouTube channel yet? Head to youtube.com slash the Rod Peterson Show now. This holiday season, wish your way at Capital GMC. Unwrap a completely customized vehicle ordering experience. Reserve a pre-ordered unit that's already on its way. Or get into a GM certified pre-owned vehicle that's on the lot and ready to roll. And don't forget, we pay big for your used vehicle, even if you don't buy from us. Plus, our service department is your winter headquarters. Get special pricing on name brand tires, storage, maintenance, and more. And we always offer free vehicle pickup and delivery. This holiday season, wish your way at Capital GMC. People donate blood for moments like this. But there are lots of reasons why Canada's lifeline needs donors every day. Like the fact that someone with leukemia can eat up to eight units of blood a week. Or that donated blood lasts no longer than 42 days. Or to help new moms and babies, like Henry. There's lots of reasons to donate blood. That's why we need donors every day. The need for blood is constant. Join Toyota and our Toyota dealers in supporting Canada's lifeline. Your family needs a break. Delta Hotel Saskatoon welcomes you to our newly renovated hotel and water park. You deserve a vacation close to home. Enjoy world-class hospitality and upscale surroundings. Rediscover Saskatoon. You can enjoy time away from home right in your own city. The kids will love the water slide. Delta Hotel Saskatoon downtown. All the essentials and then some. In the heat of the summer, heat of the summer, the familiar sounds. Oh, so feeling the air, the air is the best thing anywhere. Just give me, 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 give me back my game. Cause I live for the drama, I live for the drama, I live for the emotion. No one can take me down, bring me back my football. BetRegal.net, exclusive sports gaming partner of the CFL. Safety is a primary pillar at Core Green. We have core certification. Our workers are following best practices in the industry for safety. We always want to make sure that our contractors, us here at the shop, and our customers can come to work and go home at the end of every day. Give Core Green Systems a call today.
Bronco Plumbing, Heating, and Cooling. Experts in all residential and commercial plumbing services and proudly serving Regina and area since 1978. Bronco Plumbing, Heating, and Cooling. We'll treat you right. Hey, Don. Hey, Quinn. We have a surprise for you. Oh, my. <laughs> hey, Rod Squad. Now you can join the team with your very own RP Show gear. Head to rodpetersonshop.com and get yours today while supplies last. It's just like we wear on the show. Official RP Show gear at rodpetersonshop.com. Send us your opinions now. We won't victimize you unless you really deserve it. Now, back to your host, Rod Peterson. Welcome back, everybody. It is hour one. RP Show continues on this Monday, November the 22nd, and it is time for a lot of your favorite segment, the Taco Time Viewer Takeover. Hey, online ordering is available now. Try it today at Taco Time and get a free burrito on your first order. Use promo code Free burrito, one word, when you sign up. Again, it is Taco Time Viewer Takeover. You bet. And the boys telling me at home that for whatever reason, comments are down today, but the text line is open. I mean, there's a million ways that you can get a hold of us here on the RP Show. And I said that I would address this Islanders poll question today, and it ties in with our viewers here. Can the Islanders overcome this 5-8-2 and two start and make the playoffs? For Capital Automall Universal Collision Center, 60% on Twitter saying, yes, they can. 70% of YouTube viewers saying, yes, they can. Joe Lazito, watching on Long Island, texting in right now, says, hey, Rod, my level of concern for the Islanders is mild, and it has more to do with the division than the team. This past weekend, 25% of the team were call-ups from the AHL because so many players tested positive for COVID. To me, the key will be how they come out of the Olympic break. If they're in the hunt and come out hot, I give them as good a chance as anyone. Coming out cold spells doom for any organization. Last minute, last minute of play in hour one. Randy watching in Winnipeg on the text line says, I hope the Islanders make the playoffs. I bought a futures ticket on them to win the cup three weeks ago. LOL. I can only imagine that was with... I can only imagine that was with Bet Regal. Coming up next hour, we'll go more deeply into the curling trials. Talk coming up of a new arena in Saskatoon as well. The viewers want to get our take on that. Devin Haru will join us from CBC. I want to talk about tonight's uh, featured game too. It's Monday Night Football Giants at the Bucks tonight. Six NHL games. Plenty of fun coming up after this break in hour two for Core Grain and Great Western here on Game Plus TV. Head to youtube.com slash the Rod Peterson Show now. You gotta subscribe. Click the subscribe button for all the content you may have missed. Legend throws 713 yards in a single pro football game. A legend wins three Grey Cup MVP awards. Allen looking deep. A legend scores 1,209 points in 1,127 NHL games. Play among legends at betregal.net. Don't rack your brain trying to source the equipment and materials you need for your business. Rockstar can operate your entire supply chain, from PO creation to expediting your shipments, all from our office. Leverage the buying power of the Rockstar Buying Group to not only save money and time, but also the headache. From gloves to glue, we can provide it for you. Find out more at rockstar.com.
Comfort has always been something we, as people, strive for. It means that the places we live and work, and that the people we care most about, are able to go about their lives focusing on the things that matter. Our focus at Flametech has remained the same for more than 20 years. Now more than ever, we need each other to support our local businesses. As an industry leader in combustion services, we are proud to attend to the needs of our communities and support the local economy. Does this look familiar? Your fans deserve an incredible arena experience. It's time for an upgrade. Stunning graphics. Revenue opportunities are just the beginning with our in-venue display systems and scoring technology. Let us help you find the best solution for your facility. DDG, always delivering the best fan experience. Bronco Plumbing, Heating, and Cooling. Experts in all residential and commercial plumbing services and proudly serving Regina and area since 1978. Bronco Plumbing, Heating, and Cooling. We'll treat you right. Universal Collision Center is Saskatchewan's premier auto body shop. Our extensive process ensures that every vehicle that comes through our state-of-the-art facilities is returned pre-accident condition and that every UCC customer experience is an easy one. We're certified to repair all makes, all models, and all luxury brands, and Universal Auto Spa offers full-service detailing packages to suit you and your vehicle. Plus, we're the official body shop of your Saskatchewan Rough Riders. Universal Collision Center, 3910 Rochdale Boulevard and 2355 First Avenue in Regina. Here's how your business can be a part of Canada's fastest growing sports talk show. All you have to do is contact us and we will tell you all about the dynamic and exciting marketing opportunities we have utilizing a fully integrated 360 degree multi-platform. Imagine your business seen and heard across Canada on Game Plus TV and around the world on the Rod Peterson Digital Network. You will use one of the most overused expressions in sports. You gotta be kidding me. Get your business involved. Contact the Rod Peterson Show today. Connor McDavid clapped back at John Tortorella. He was discussing Tortorella's take that Connor McDavid should change his game. But he was like, I'm not even dignifying that with a response. Sometimes smart people say stupid things. He had to have been referring to John Tortorella. Does John Tortorella actually believe that Connor McDavid needs to change his game? Do you think he actually believes that? This is the Rod Peterson Show. Welcome into Hour 2 of the RP Show. It is brought to you all week, Hour 2, by Great Western Brewing's Original 16, the official beer of the Olympic trial. And our Tim Hortons Canadian Curling Trial coverage brought to you on this program by Core Grain as well, doing the right thing for your farm. And uh, it's always fun when we crack the lid on Hour 2. Bit of a... Uh, a pun there, I guess, on Original 16, sponsoring Hour 2, as we bring the moose in from Saskatoon. He's at the Great Western Brewery in Saskatoon for our coverage. And by the way, we have a hotel sponsor as well, the Delta. Darren, we should mention that. Yeah, the Delta by Marriott, downtown Saskatoon. Beautiful spot. Uh, they've got us in really taken care of well this week. So big thanks to Amanda and everybody at the Delta. Give me, before we jump back into the viewer comments, that's why I said I... I think people love Hour 2 so much because it's just a mishmash of what's been going on on the program so far. And if you've just joined us, you missed former NHL referee Tim Peel with some very insightful thoughts on things. But what what is the buzz in Saskatoon with the Olympic trials uh, going on right now? This is a massive event. I guess it's not international because it's the Canadian Olympic trials, but it's a massive national event. What's the city like right now? It's it. It's a huge national event. The city is 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 buzzing a little bit. You know, where, where you go, people are kind of talking about it. Uh, they're flooding out to the SaskTel Center for these games, which is awesome. And then downtown, even throughout the weekend, as they, things got started on the weekend, um, downtown was really buzzing. Now, this is a great city. Downtown's always buzzing. But we were in a local spot, actually. It was Taverna, the Italian uh, restaurant, the great Italian restaurant that you and I went to earlier in the in the year. Um, Jennifer Jones was sitting in there having some food and there's people around and you can hear the chatter talking about it and fans are wanting to talk to her and and uh, very cool place to be right now. It really is, you know, from the whole downtown core and then people going out to the arena for the game. So I can't wait to get out there. 
I haven't been out to the rink. I haven't been to the patch, but uh, downtown's been buzzing, and I can't wait to get there and see how the rink is in the crowd. Well, and for those curling fans, defending champion Rachel Holman looks to get back on track at the trials tonight when she faces Kelsey Rock in the evening draw. Holman's Ottawa rink is off to an 0-2 start. And uh, in this event, it'll determine Canada's men's and women's reps at the Beijing Games. Jennifer Jones leads the women's standings at 3-0. Entering today's action, Brad Gushu and Brad Jacobs top the men's table at 2-0. All three leaders are Olympic champions. And I will come back... Uh, Darren, to the new Saskatoon Arena discussion, because there are texters that want to discuss that. But Ray Hollowell, Ray is watching in the six. Ray in the six. He's in Scarborough officially, by the way. And he says, hi, Rod. What a game by Jonathan Taylor yesterday. Five touchdowns. He says, the Bills need a runner like that. Had to laugh how the fans turned on the Bills yesterday. And for those that don't know, I got the summary here. This was quite a game. Jonathan Taylor set a franchise record for the Colts by scoring five times and took over the NFL lead in both yards rushing and touchdowns as Indy routed Buffalo 41-15. Taylor scored three times in the first half, including a 23-yard catch en route to the first five-touchdown game in the league this season. He finished with a season-high 185 yards rushing and four touchdowns and has 12, sorry, 1,122 yards on the season. Colts now 6-5. Bills dropped to six and four, and now a half game behind New England in the AFC East. And I got to say this, we're now into the second half of the NFL season. I wonder how much things are going to turn. Patriots are atop the division now. The winners of five in a row. What a race the rest of the way to win that division. Uh, Darren, and with, with regards to the fans turning on the Bills, you can see it. It's Buffalo. They're an emotionally oh, yeah. damaged fan base. What are they saying in Nashville yeah. with Tennessee getting upset by the Houston Texans on Sunday. I know it's, it's not good. I mean, they're really disappointed and, and mostly because of the mistakes. It was there for Tennessee to win that game and they should have just too many mistakes. And, and same with, with Buffalo, you know, you want to believe that they're a Super Bowl contender, that they're a favorite for the Super Bowl, that they're dominant on offense, dominant on defense, that Josh Allen's an MVP candidate. And then they have these efforts like against Jacksonville and then against Indy. And you wonder, they're like, is it not as good as we thought it was? And you're kind of fragile as a fan base, and you're waiting for the bottom to fall out of the boat. And it's kind of happening. But they're still a good team. Tennessee's still a good team. You know, for Tennessee, I think we're just hoping to get, you know, we're going to get into the playoffs. Still got to win a couple more games to do it, to clinch it. But just to wait and get Derrick Henry back in January. And with Buffalo, just keep treading water, and hopefully you can find some way to get into a rhythm consistently but now new england's back and all of a sudden the division is not just buffaloes for the taking you have to play well new england is one of the best teams in football they'll be in my top five tomorrow so um it's tough for buffalo it really is and, and i feel for their fans but you still have a really good football team i believe that it's just a matter of getting everything back together darren i'm in the process of getting the comments back, but, okay. and I think it's important because it's brought to you by taco time. So great work by Jordan on the yes. back end. But while we work on that, Brady has written in on the text line at 902-518-3033. Says, Hey Rod, I'm doing a leadership discussion presentation on the proposed plan for a new arena in Saskatoon and was, and was just wondering if you too believe the city of Saskatoon needs a new arena. And I want to bring this up for, while it seems like a local discussion for the people across the country and our U.S. viewers that don't understand it, of which I'm getting messages that there are a ton of American viewers tuning in today, which, by the way, I was stopped in the Toronto airport yesterday and somebody came up to me and said, I understand you, you have over half your viewers are American. Why? I said, I have no idea. But anyways, Saskatoon built a, an NHL caliber arena in the late 80s, that seats 15,000 fans. But they never got their NHL team, very similar to Quebec City, which theirs is a jaw-dropping arena right now, the Videotron Arena, just sitting there waiting for an NHL team that may or may not ever come. Now, my political friends in Saskatchewan, government mucky mucks, are saying, Rod, you need to get behind the new Saskatoon Arena proposal. And I'm like, okay, sure, absolutely. So I will say to Brady, 
yeah, Saskatoon needs a new arena. And I get it. I get it. 30-plus years for Sastel Center is a long time. That's ancient in today's arena standards. But my core beliefs, as you know, are often what you want and what you need are two different things. So I guess my question to you is, does Saskatoon need a new arena? They're hosting, a, you just said it, a major national event in the Tim Hortons curling trials, and they'll do a great job with what they have. If they were to build this new 15,000-seat-plus arena, is it, let's be honest, with the eye on an NHL franchise down the line? I don't think so. I don't know that this market could sustain an NHL franchise. American Hockey League, maybe. But even, you know, major junior in the market doesn't need a 15,000-seat arena. The American Hockey League doesn't need a 15,000-seat arena. You know, they need 5,000 seats, right? 7,000 seats, something like that. But this is more of, and, and you look at the rush and the lacrosse where they've been able to sell out the Sastel Center and have very big crowds, so they would use it. But from a sports landscape, there's not a need for a new arena. But from an entertainment and venue landscape, that's the biggest for me because, and this is why the discussion's happening now and maybe a couple of years late because they're less than 10 years away from needing a new arena, I believe. And it's about a 10 year project to put together, you know, from getting financing and getting things built and the site and all that kind of stuff and the red tape. But Saskatoon has become a destination city in this country and maybe in North America. It's now one of the culture and food hot spots in the country when it comes to, you know, great restaurants and great places to eat, the river views and, and, and the travel now. It's a tourist destination. So it's become a hot spot. And it's a really big spot for events and concerts. And, you know, the biggest names on the planet will make Saskatoon a destination on their Canadian tours. It's up there as, as part of a travel destination with Vancouver, Calgary, Edmonton, Toronto, Winnipeg, Ottawa, Montreal, et cetera. Um, Saskatoon's on that page. And every time big names come through, they're sold out. Garth Brooks did multiple, multiple shows here because they kept selling out. But if that venue keeps going down, those names will stop coming and that'll be a big hurt for the city. So even if you're not a sports fan, this new venue um, is big for the city because that then affects the whole downtown core and all the culture and the hotel business and everything else that keeps Saskatoon beautiful and vibrant and growing so you know i'm a big fan of the new facility and i really was always been a big fan of the downtown location that toys r us parking lot um right beside the mall right off the river that was always my number one destination but they need it and i hope it happens wonderful answer like i say if you build one what's the end game and i think you uh just answered it very well yeah Clark has told me, abort, abort, right now, our viewer comment system, because it affects my video stream here. So, but Clark said that he would throw comments up on the screen, which will work out just fine. Can you put up the comment, if you don't mind, from Cine Girl? She's in Pittsburgh. And off the top of my head, she said, good morning, guys. You both look great. Uh, not that one. There was one after that. She says, I love Saskatoon. It is up and coming tourist area. So why not? There it is. Hey, gentlemen, happy Monday. You both look fabulous. I have so much to catch up on here. The Steelers broke my heart last night, and she is watching in Pittsburgh. And uh, last night in Inglewood, California, Justin Herbert threw a 53-yard touchdown pass to Mike Williams, 217 to go, and Los Angeles held off Pittsburgh 41-37 on Sunday night football. LA is now 6-4. and four. They had a 27-10 lead going into the fourth quarter before the Steelers 5-4-1 and one now. Rallied to take a 37-34 lead on Chris Boswell's 45-yard field goal with two, with, sorry, with 324 left. And it goes back and forth on how the game ended. Ben Roethlisberger passed for 273 yards and three touchdowns for the Steelers after missing last week's game dealing with COVID. By the way, now would be a great time, I think, Darren, to talk about tonight's featured game as we look at Sports on Tap for the Tap Brew House and drive through Liquor Store. Monday night football, three and six New York Giants at the six and three Tampa Bay Buccaneers just up the road here. The Bucs are home, hoping to avoid a third straight loss. That's the Monday night football game. Giants, Buccaneers. Then there are six NHL games tonight. Columbus at Buffalo. Vegas at St. Louis. Alex Petrangelo's first return. 
Anaheim at Nashville, Pittsburgh at Winnipeg, Ottawa at Colorado, and Carolina at San Jose. My featured game will be Monday night football and probably dialing up the Manning Brothers broadcast on ESPN2. But of all of those games, and maybe it's curling for you. I don't know. That's where you're in Saskatoon for, covering the uh, Tim Hortons trials for yep. Core Grain and Original 16. What's your featured game tonight? Yeah, it's curling for me and Monday Night Football. So I'll take the curling. Um, they've been doing alternate draws. So the men are on the ice this afternoon at 2 o'clock Central. And then the women are back on the ice, um, I believe, at 7. So I'll be watching the curling tonight. My my featured game's the afternoon game, though. It's the featured game of the day for me is the Brad jacobs Brennan botcher match. It's actually going to be the featured game on TSN at 2 o'clock. So an hour after we're off the air. Um, for me, that's it. Botcher against Jacobs, but I'll be watching the curling tonight and Monday Night Football because Tom Brady and the Bucks, they need to win, but they need to win convincingly. He needs to put up 30 or 40 points. It'll be an interesting game. I would like to take this opportunity to point out, and by the way, Clark has uh, instructed me to go to the YouTube feed, and that's a great idea, Clark, where I can get all the comments from everybody. Approved. Yeah, but I would like to point out that there aren't a lot of CFL questions coming in from our viewers today, but I think it would be prudent to talk about it because it is semifinal week, and for those that missed it, the betregal.net opening betting lines of the week for Montreal visiting Hamilton in the Eastern semifinal Saturday is Ticats favored by four points at home. Western semifinal, the Calgary Stampeders at Saskatchewan, Rough Riders favored by 1.5 at home. And I just want to uh, re-up it for those that weren't watching an hour ago, Darren. You said you're okay with those betting lines. I, I, it's way, way, way too early in the week to get into predictions and who we think will win or not. But it is a tremendous time uh, in for CFL fans. And I look at Winnipeg. Let's just talk about Winnipeg for a second because there's a lot of viewers in Winnipeg. Our analytics are showing us right now. Apparently, they've shored up their kicking game. What was the only thing we heard all year long? We got to get a kicker. We got to get a kicker. What they finish? 11 and three. And that was their only problem. And Sergio Castillo kicks four field goals the other night in a loss at Calgary. Are the Bombers the perfect team going into the CFL playoffs? I don't know any weaknesses. You know, point of a weakness to me. Um, I think they're good running the football. Zach Claros is obviously, you know, one of the best. Their defense is good. Now their special teams is good. So, yeah, I mean... They are the class of the Canadian Football League. And it's not close. Like, it's the Bombers, there's a little gap, and then there's everybody else. And that's not to take away anything from anybody else, but it's just that's how good this team has been and the consistency and what Mike O'Shea has done. So it's a credit to him. It's a credit to that whole organization. Um, and, and they've deserved it. It's been a long time coming since they've been this good and since they've been on top of the league like this and this heavily favored um, I will be shocked if Winnipeg does not win the Great Cup. Yeah, me too. Me too. And we've got all week to talk about it. People really love the arena discussion, by the way, as do I. And Brady triggered it all on the text line with his question about Saskatoon getting a new arena. Northside YEG, one of our P1 viewers watching in Edmonton, says, I just looked up that Videotron Arena. Quebec City should have an NHL team. That place just opened in 2015. For sure, but that's my point. They don't. And sorry to break it to you, they're not getting one. So it's like you spent a lot of money on a jaw-dropping NHL arena. I just don't think you're getting a team. Ryan McCarthy in Saratoga, New York, says Albany has an NHL-ready arena but could barely draw 4,000 fans in the last years of the AHL being here. Correlation does not equal causation in terms of arenas. Eh. He's throwing around some $20 words there. By the way, <laughs> our VP of Sim Events, Nelson Hakowicz, writes in, and he says, in 10,000 simulations, I have the Alouettes a 60% win probability by two points, Riders a 64% win probability by 4.5 points. Hot take. So we can always, yeah, we can always count on Nelson, our VP of Sim Events, to run the Sims. He's got Montreal winning by two. Riders winning by 4.5. How about that? Spicy. That's great. 
And while we while we have it, I know We're Nelson's gonna... watching. That needs to be a that needs to be a graphic, Instagram with the percentages on there. I think that will stir up a lot of conversation. That the sim by our director of sim events, Nelson, has come out with these projections heading into the to a semifinal weekend. That's cool stuff. Montreal by two, Riders by four. We'll be back. I'm broadcasting live from South Florida. The Moose is at the Great Western Brewery in Saskatoon. Great Western's original 16 beers bringing you our Canadian Olympic curling trials coverage all week long. And you're watching on Game Plus TV, live on YouTube and 24-hour sports radio at rodpeterson.com. Head to youtube.com slash the Rod Peterson Show now. You gotta subscribe. Click the subscribe button for all the content you may have missed. Nestled in the scenic Quapel Valley, just 20 minutes northwest of Regina, is one of the finest golf courses in all of Saskatchewan, the Deer Valley Golf Club. The clubhouse has a full-service restaurant, and customers can enjoy a casual dining experience with spectacular views of the golf course and valley. A fully stocked golf shop staffed by PGA of Canada professionals is equipped to meet all of your golf apparel and equipment needs. Book your tee time, family event, or corporate tournament today at the Deer Valley Golf Club. Call 306-731-1445. Hey, Don. Hey, Quinn. We have a surprise for you. Oh, my. <laughs> Bronco Plumbing, Heating, and Cooling. Experts in all residential and commercial plumbing services and proudly serving Regina and area since 1978. Bronco Plumbing, Heating, and Cooling. We'll treat you right. People donate blood for moments like this. But there are lots of reasons why Canada's lifeline needs donors every day. Like the fact that someone with leukemia can eat up to eight units of blood a week. Or that donated blood lasts no longer than 42 days. Or to help new moms and babies, like Henry. There's lots of reasons to donate blood. That's why we need donors every day. The need for blood is constant. Join Toyota and our Toyota dealers in supporting Canada's lifeline. In the heat of the summer, heat of the summer, the moon, your sound. It's a sound feel in the air. It's the best thing anywhere. Just give me, 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 give me back my game. Cause I live for the drama. I live for the drama. I live for the crowd. I live for the emotion. VetRegal.net, exclusive sports gaming partner of the CFL. Safety is a primary pillar at Core Green. We have core certification. Our workers are following best practices in the industry for safety. We always want to make sure that our contractors, us here at the shop, and our customers can come to work and go home at the end of every day. Give Core Green Systems a call today. Some of the challenges we face with the CT technology that we have today is some of the deficiencies in around integration with some of our other systems. The addition of, of two new 40 simulators uh, within the programming of the Saskatchewan Cancer Agency is, is gonna have significant impact on, on you know, the care we provide to the people of Saskatchewan. squad now you can join the team with your very own rp show gear head to rodpetersonshop.com and get yours today while supplies last it's just like we were on the show official rp show gear at rodpetersonshop.com laid back and kicking it let's head back to the studio here's rod welcome back everybody the rp show continues in two remote locations today. I'm in South Florida, and the Moose is at the Great Western Brewery in Saskatoon as part of our Olympic curling trial coverage, as it is it is day three today. Talking CFL playoffs, talking a variety of things. I, where the heck is it? Somebody wrote, 
I think it was John Schmeiser. Yeah. In Kansas City. He says, CFL and curling updates. Where else but on the RP show? Exactly. I'm glad you noticed because nobody else is doing it. And <sighs> Brady really triggered quite a discussion on the new arenas, uh, Darren, as you can probably see. And I'll just say one oh, more yeah. from John Schmeiser in, in Kansas City. He says, did Nelson pick the winner of the Sim Grey Cup last year? Still have heartbreak over how that one ended. Darren and I called the uh, computer simulated Grey Cup. Remember that? Man, was that oh, awesome. Yeah. 20,000 viewers saw the Saskatchewan Rough Riders on a coaching blender. Blow it. Go to overtime and lose to the Ottawa Red Blacks in overtime. Who, oh. Nelly, was that something else? And they're still getting over it in virtual Ottawa. Yep. It was not pretty. Uh, no. Sorry, Moose. Just trying to get... You, you can see with these comments here, it's, uh, it's a little tricky with what we're doing here. They're talking about arenas. They're talking about arenas. And Winnipeg being the smallest NHL market is that true there's no uh nhl market smaller than winnipeg I, I could see that being a fact i could see it too i could see it too i know for arena size right i think it's the smallest at just over fifteen thousand, which is what saskatoon has right a little over fifteen thousand. so but it's but it's capable and if you're engaging your fan base really well it just means you got to work hard to make sure that you're getting people into the venue and staying close to that number you know game in and game out They've done a really great job in Winnipeg to do that. If I had my bell, I would ring it. A couple of things that have come up here on Canada's daytime sports talk show. Vegas Golden Knights head coach Peter DeBoer announced after the morning skate today that Adam Brooks would make his Golden Knights debut. Oh, Brooks awesome. E-Bucks, the former Toronto Maple Leaf and Montreal Canadian and captain of God's team, the Regina Pats. Adam Brooks makes his Golden Knights debut tonight. Right. And on. by the way, you're all going to want to know this from the Florida Panthers. The Florida Panthers announced today that they have launched an all new kids club with three membership options. Moose young Panthers fans will have access to exclusive kids club events, special offers, Panthers merchandise packs, and more South Florida boys and girls age 14 and under are invited to join the Panthers kids club, which offers Three membership tiers with varying member benefits. I'm not going to go into all of them, but I like uh, the effort of the Florida Panthers here, whom, by the way, I spoke with this morning, and uh, I'll be in attendance on Wednesday night when the Philadelphia Flyers come to town. So just pointing that out. So your feature game tonight is curling. Mine is Monday Night Football, and the Vegas Golden Knights debuting Adam Brooks. So that's what's uh, happening here on a Monday. I feel like I'm not quite done, though, with CFL playoff. And I think a lot of people have logged in on semifinal week to talk about that. I mentioned in the commentary, commentary this morning, and I mentioned it in hour one, that a football scout in Missouri texted me about the entertainment factor being down in the CFL. And, and I said, well, nine points scored for the Cowboys yesterday, no touchdowns. I think there was a lot of NFL games yesterday that there was not a touchdown scored. There was only one scored in the Winnipeg-Calgary game Saturday night. He gave me seven reasons, this scout, why he thought CFL scoring was down, and it went back to no pads in practice. The year off, obviously, that's what everybody's talking about. Those are two of the seven. The extra global player, talent pool being diluted somewhat, Darren. Do you have thoughts on why if the, coach, why the, the coaching down, cap might be Yeah, part scoring's of it. down. Yeah, you go ahead with your thoughts on that. You know, that's I look at that too. Um, but again, it, it's kind of one of those unexplainable things. You know, um, maybe it's just defenses are better and offenses are just not on the same page. You know, um, it could literally be that. You know, I don't know if it has much to do with wearing pads or not wearing pads. I mean, the NFL, they rarely wear pads in practice too. Um, you know, we got to keep the players safe. Um, there's a lot of increased rules where you can't hit defenseless receivers and the pass interference is tighter, which is supposed to open up more offense. And it, it doesn't right now. 
uh, translate into the Canadian football game. You know, um, largely abandoning the run, less patience um, to, you know, have really long, sustained, clock-chewing drives. Um, so you end up with a lot more two and outs, which results in, you know, not getting into a rhythm, not getting comfortable. And then when you have a couple of drives stall, then you're like, oh, well, we now we have to score, so we better pass. And, you know, I, I'd like to see more run game involved. But that's the trend of the game is kind of moving that way a little bit, less running of the football. Um, but that would help. Um, and, and literally the year off. But I, I do. I still hold out that the playoffs are going to be wildly entertaining. I think it's going to be better. And I think this is, I'm hoping this is just a one-year thing because university football went through the year off, but the games are still great and the scoring is still there and everything's still awesome. So uh, I'm hoping this is just a, a one-year unexplainable phenomenon for the CFL and they're back to uh, regular business as usual next year. Our VP of Sim Events, Nelson Hackowitz, chiming in and says 55% of the starting rosters this season are CFL rookies. Let them get their feet under them and we're in for a burner next season. I think there's something to that for sure. Um, I'm not, and I'm not totally sure if his numbers are correct, but I do distinctly remember the October the 9th game, Calgary at Saskatchewan, reading that 55% of the players were in their first contract. Both teams combined. That doesn't mean rookies necessarily. You could be in your second year and still be your first contract. Right. But I think there's something to be said for that. And I guess it depends. There's a lot of noise out there with what the CFL is going through. I mean, come on. Did you see any of Friday's game, uh, Edmonton at BC? Did you see any of that? There was nobody at that football game. Like this financial I picture, know. there are people that want to talk about it. And I think... Now is it necessarily the time to have that discussion when we are on the cusp of the CFL playoff? Semi-final double, double header this weekend, Sunday. Montreal at Hamilton, Calgary at Saskatchewan. Then we spill over into the divisional finals, which will be played in Winnipeg and Toronto. And then, of course, the Grey Cup at Hamilton. Is now the time to talk about the future of the CFL, do you think, Darren? I don't think so. I don't think it's today. I don't think it's right now. This is this is time to talk about the playoffs and the Grey Cup. I think, you know, I think this discussion happens in the off season, and when we start seeing numbers roll in of earnings and profits and losses, and to see the financial situation of where these teams are at, and then what else happens? You know, moving forward, what does the season look like next year? Are we going to start on time? Are we going to have a full season? You know, are there going to be rule changes? Are we going to have other you know um, financial caps put in place? Um, but right now, you know, we should be excited about the playoffs. I think it's important. I think it's, uh, you know, it's it's time for playoff football. Let's celebrate the game for what it is, how great it can be, the history, and and let's get excited as as we have a December Grey Cup. You know, the the Christmas trees are going to be out. Santa's going to be out in Winnipeg. You know, in a couple of weeks. So let's let's celebrate the game and let's worry about the league and the financial health once that's over. I think that's that's appropriate. I couldn't agree more. Uh, from Darren, watching in Salt Lake City, Utah, he says, great weekend. Utes crush the Ducks. Chargers stop doing Charger stuff and beat the Steelers. Can't wait for the CFL playoffs to get going. He thinks Stamps Riders will be the best game. And I think that we will, uh, as you pointed out last segment, get a little play on Nelson Hackowich's simulations, computer simulations, over 10,000 of them picking that Montreal will win in Hamilton by two and Saskatchewan will win at home by four over the Calgary Stampeders. Randy from the Peg writes in and says, we need a WHL arena here in Winnipeg. Uh, well, you've got a wonderful NHL facility there that also houses an AHL facility. Have you noticed across this land, Darren, that... Uh, it's never enough for people. Have you noticed that? I know. It's like, I don't know if you, were, if you saw the interview with Gus Ferrat the other day with us on Friday. He goes, yeah, the Penguins won last night 6 nothing, and the fans here are mad it wasn't 7 nothing." At what, point, I know. <laughs> at what I know. point do we stop listening to people? You know, you have to for your mental health. And, and again, it's all about perspective. The entire game is about perspective and how you decide, to, how you choose to look at every situation. So... You can choose to be disappointed with a 6 nothing win, 
um, or you can choose to be happy. And uh, that's it. So just got to, you know, kind of quiet the noise and, uh, you know, look at your perspective. Checking uh, from the viewer, the view crew here, the Rod Squad. Corey's watching in Tallahassee, Florida. The Hockey Club podcast. He says, it was not long ago we were worried there would not be a CFL season. Let's enjoy it, whatever it is. That's kind of what I've been saying all year long, I think. But when you're on the air two hours a day, you say a lot of things. Chris Bird in King City, Ontario says, the numbers and financials for the CFL and member franchises will not be comparable to any other year. Obvi. From Tacona Powley in Winnipeg, RP, let's just worry about enjoying the playoffs. I agree, but we, we're talking about both. So thanks for your input. By the way, Corey in Tallahassee asked, uh, he wants to come down to South Florida and visit me, Darren. I don't know if I told you that. Former pro, hockey pro. He says, you golf, don't you? I said, no, but I would for you. But can we do something else? What are you going to do? I don't know. He'll be down here <laughs> at some point. But I'm, if, there's a lot of things to do besides golf. Um, yeah. Mm-mm. Oh, Clark's telling us to take a break because our next guest, uh, Devin Haru, is logged in. Moose, we'll see you back for overtime, okay? Sounds good. Say hi to Devin. All right. Big big day here on the RP Show. Two remote broadcasts, myself in South Florida, Darren at the Great Western Brewery in Saskatoon. Great Western Original 16 Beer bringing you, along with Core Grain, our Tim Hortons Canadian Curling Trial coverage. Devin Haru from the CBC Curling Aficionado joins us next to talk about the trials heading into day three. You're watching on Game Plus Television, YouTube live streaming, and 24-hour sports radio at rodpeterson.com. Head to youtube.com slash the Rod Peterson Show now. You gotta subscribe. Click the subscribe button for all the content you may have missed. Comfort has always been something we, as people, strive for. It means that the places we live and work, and that the people we care most about, are able to go about their lives focusing on the things that matter. Our focus at Flame Tech has remained the same for more than 20 years. Now more than ever, we need each other to support our local businesses. As an industry leader in combustion services, we are proud to attend to the needs of our communities and support the local economy. Addiction. It destroys relationships, families, and lives. It makes individuals and the people who love them feel powerless. But the good news is that addiction is a treatable illness. At Aurora Recovery Center, we provide everything you need to build a solid foundation for your recovery with holistic evidence-based treatment tailored to each individual. Located in Gimli, Manitoba on the shores of Lake Winnipeg, Aurora can help regardless of whether or not you feel ready or have tried before. Aurora Recovery Center. Recovery for life. Visit auroracoverycenter.com for more information today. This holiday season, wish your way at Capital GMC. Unwrap a completely customized vehicle ordering experience. Reserve a pre-ordered unit that's already on its way. Or get into a GM certified pre-owned vehicle that's on the lot and ready to roll. And don't forget, we pay big for your used vehicle, even if you don't buy from us. Plus, our service department is your winter headquarters. Get special pricing on name brand tires, storage, maintenance, and more. And we always offer free vehicle pickup and delivery. This holiday season, wish your way at Capital GMC. In the heat of the summer, heat of the summer, the familiar sound. It's a sound feeling in the air. It's the best thing anywhere. Just give me, 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 give me back my game. Cause I live for the drama. I live for the drama. I live for the emotion. No one can take me down. Bring me back my football. BetRegal.net, exclusive sports gaming partner of the CFL. 
Don't rack your brain trying to source the equipment and materials you need for your business. Rockstar can operate your entire supply chain, from PO creation to expediting your shipments, all from our office. Leverage the buying power of the Rockstar Buying Group to not only save money and time, but also the headache. From gloves to glue, we can provide it for you. Find out more at rockstar.com. Business owners and marketers. Okay, we know you think we're pretty cool. That's why we want you to share in the coolness factor. Partner with The Rod Peterson Show and market your business every weekday to sports lovers just like yourself. Take advantage of our many cost-effective commercial and promotional opportunities. Tell the world about your business. Yes, the world. Thanks to Game Plus TV and the Rod Peterson Digital Network. Contact us today and find out how you can be a part of Canada's fastest-growing sports talk show, The Rod Peterson Show. Oh, yeah. He's back. Time for more of The Rod Peterson Show. Welcome back, everybody. Canada's daytime sports talk show continues on this Monday. And before we bring in our next guest, I'm actually chomping at the bit to get his take on this breaking news. Breaking news today. I do have the cowbell with me. The board of directors of the Edmonton Elks football team has terminated the contracts of president and CEO Chris Presson, general manager Brock Sunderland, and head coach Jamie Elizondo, effective immediately. The Edmonton Elks. Cleaning house on this Monday morning, firing the president, the general manager, and the head coach. Well, Devin Haru is a curling aficionado at CBC, but he's also a staunch CFL fan and for many years a rider season ticket holder. Might still be. Devin, what do you think about this news out of Edmonton here this morning? Roddy, you and I have had, uh, and first of all, great to see you. You and I have had so many conversations over the years about uh, the evil empire being the mark of a championship franchise in the CFL. They didn't win a game at home this year. The handling of the Joey Moss situation, everything we heard out of that franchise this year was a disaster. Uh, and you saw it reflected in the attendance, didn't you? It was abysmal inside Commonwealth Stadium. They are and have been the flagship in, in a lot of ways of the CFL. And when you're as bad as you've been this year, and when you have so many distractions going around that team, I think it was the right thing to do. This is not shocking to me. I think you would probably agree with that. No, I don't think it's shocking at all. My, my worry is the board of directors not only made this decision to clean house, but they put them all in their current positions. So I'm just worried as an Edmonton, if I was an Edmonton fan about the direction of the club, confidence in who they hire. You think they call Chris Jones to come back and run the whole show? Why not? And I think he would probably head back there in a heartbeat, right? Uh, some good memories there. And uh, Chris Jones just uh, continually finds a way to get back into coaching positions in the CFL, doesn't he? And, you know, here's the other thing, Rod. I want to know who did the CFL schedule this year because I am in my home province. It is playoff week in the CFL. And I'm going to have to be covering a curling game two hours away from a West semifinal. It's going to be one of the first times in my life that I missed a playoff game. Uh, but... Duty calls and the roar of the rings are underway in Saskatoon, and it's good to be home. Wonderful segue, Devin, and that's why we brought you on. And our curling coverage of the trials is brought to you by Core Grain, doing the right thing for your farm and for Great Western's original 16 beer. I don't know where you want to start. Jennifer Jones and Tracy Fleury are unbeaten. Uh, one of them's 3-0, and the other 2-0. and Brad Gushu is unbeaten, going up against John Epping today. Brendan Botcher, winless. The reigning Briar champion. Uh, what are the surprises and big stories through two days, Devin? A shocking start by uh, Rachel Holman and Brennan Botcher. No wins between those two really, really good curling teams. And all you have to do is look at, at what's been unfolding over these first couple of days, Roddy. And, you know, last night, Kerry Anderson, the two-time defending Scotty's champion, has an open hit to win a game hits and rolls out, gives up a steal of two in the 10th and to lose to Jacqueline Harrison. Speaking of Jacqueline Harrison, she knocked off Rachel Holman in the first game of this thing. So Anderson has one win at one and two. Rachel Holman, 0 oh and two. Brennan Botcher, 0 oh and two. This thing, this beast that is the Canadian Olympic curling trials can literally shake the most seasoned curler to its core. We're seeing that right now. Brennan Botcher missed an open draw to the eight-foot Roddy. That's a skip's dream 
at this level to mm. hit the full eight foot, and he missed it against Tanner Horgan yesterday. This is crazy, but you said it. Jennifer Jones leads the way, and guess what? She has that look that she had in Sochi in 2014 when she won gold because Jenny Jones can win a game all by herself. She's 3-0. and She's looking comfortable, and I would not want to play her in Saskatoon this week. I was watching some of the action yesterday on my TSN app, and I got a couple questions for you out of that. One is the crowds look like a decent attendance. Must be nice to have a crowd for curling events after the bubble in Calgary last year and however many days they were in there. What's that atmosphere like, Devin? Yeah, so right now, uh, Rod, they're average about 4,000 fans per, per draw, and that's pretty good for the opening weekend of an Olympic trials. Um, you know, I've, I've been seeing on your show these recurring themes of how are we getting fans into the stands? The CFL attendance has me really concerned. But then, of course, you look at Commonwealth and what happened with that Canadian men's soccer team. And so I think everybody's still a little hesitant about whether or not they want to show back up at especially an indoor venue to watch a sporting event. But I think Curling Canada is happy that they're getting four to 5,000 people per draw. But I expect this to build. The one thing I will say is I know that organizers were hoping that the local team, of course, Team Dunstone, would have a run here, an 0-2 start. And, of course, I don't think we can not talk about the fact that they had that lineup change literally at the 11th hour, can you imagine, Rod, you wait four years for this moment. You place third in the last two briars. You actually believe you have a chance. And then you have to make a lineup change at third. Braden Moscowi saying he can't play due to personal reasons. I've been, you know, I have a lot of contacts in this curling world. I haven't been able to get any more clarity on this. Everybody very tight lipped. But Colton Watt out of Winnipeg Beach, literally throwing rocks with his girlfriend at the club in Manitoba. 9.30 on Wednesday night, two days before practice, he goes from Winnipeg Beach to the bright lights of the curling world and the biggest Olympic trial stage. And the team just hasn't looked comfortable so far. They can turn it around, obviously, this afternoon, a huge game against Cooey, and I'm going to call it probably a must win because if you lose your first three, in fact, in the history of this, if you lost your first two, no team in the history of the Olympic trials has ever come all the way back to win the trials. So that might affect the crowds, but curling is back. Fans in the arena are back, and I know the curlers are loving it. Amazing uh, commentary there. And by the way, I'm going to text you. You still got the same number, same 416 number? I'm going to send you a text of what I've heard of the Brendan Muscoe departure from the curling trials, if you don't mind, and the other. As the curling fan that you are, I'm watching the game last night, and th this voice came into my head that asked, how's the ice? In 2021, is that a question anymore? Remember how it used to be, Devin? I mean, you don't look as old as me, but you're close to as old as me. It used to be a thing. Is ice making and technology now a thing that we don't even question the ice in these arenas anymore? No, it's absolutely a thing. It's an awesome question, Rod. Uh, and I do have the same number, so I look forward to that text. But it absolutely is a thing. And I can tell you, Greg Owasco is a head ice tech out here. They've had some issues in SAS Play. I, I still call it SAS Place. Uh, they've had some issues in the building. In fact, uh, some of the drafts, some of the airflow in that building. And, of course, you know, I go back to my days uh, hosting uh, – post-game show with the Saskatoon Blades. It can be drafty in that old barn, and it has been drafty. And what that can do is that can wreak a little bit of havoc on some of the hot spots on the ice. And what you get, you get some patches, you get some frost on the ice. And so what was fascinating to me, and I've watched probably too many hours of live curling, but I still love it, uh, is Greg Awaska walked out in the middle of the Saturday night draw, the second draw of this thing, walked into the dividers in the middle of the curlers in the middle of the games because he wanted to get a sense of what was going on in the building live during the game. And this is some breaking news that I can tell you that I'm hearing from the curlers. Late last night, they decided to paper the rocks. And if you're new to the game, papering the rocks is a very sort of technical thing. It's a secret thing that the ice makers have mastered. They sandpaper the bottom of the granite so that it gets a little grittier and that it grabs that pebble and gets a little more curl. They want more curl on the ice. So they're papering it this early. You'll remember back at the briar in the bubble, some of the players were not notified. The rock patterns changed. It created a controversy. Now they're doing it just 
two days into this event. So pay attention specifically today. The teams that figure out the ice and those freshly papered rocks are going to be the ones that come out on top today. Wow, I knew you'd have the answer. I have just checked, texted you, check your phone. Uh, Devin, thanks for the update. I think we're going to get you later this week. I really appreciate it, and enjoy uh, being home and some wonderful curling. Always good to see you, Rod, and I got the message. Talk to you soon. All right. CBC's Devin Haru joining us from Saskatoon and the Tim Hortons Olympic Curling Trials. A quick sports update before we roll. In this segment, the Ottawa Senators are set to return to NHL play tonight in a showdown against the Colorado Avalanche in Denver. The Sins had three games postponed last week due to a COVID-19 outbreak on the team. Winnipeg Jets will enjoy a brief return home tonight when they welcome the Pittsburgh Penguins. Jets are coming off road losses at Edmonton and Vancouver and will hit the road for another three after tonight. And uh, week 11 of the NFL season will wrap up tonight in Tampa with a game between the Buccaneers and the New York Giants. The Bucs have lost two straight but still lead the NFC South with a 6-3 and three record. The Giants are last in the NFC East at 3-6. and six. And, of course, the big news, the Edmonton Elks cleaning house today. The president and CEO, Chris Presson, the general manager, Brock Sunderland, and the head coach, Jamie Elizondo, all fired moments ago from the Alberta Capitol. This sports update for Dub Network. And for Ben Cahoon's G2G Protein Bars, order yours now at g2gbars.ca. The most returns for overtime with lots to digest. You're watching the RP Show on the Game Plus Television Network, YouTube live streaming, and 24-hour sports radio at rodpeterson.com. Have you subscribed to the Rod Peterson Show YouTube channel yet? Head to youtube.com slash the Rod Peterson Show now. This holiday season, wish your way at Capital Ford Lincoln. Unwrap a completely customized vehicle ordering experience. Reserve a pre-ordered unit that's already on its way. Or get into a pre-owned vehicle that's on the lot and ready to roll. And don't forget, we pay big for your used vehicle, even if you don't buy from us. Plus, our service department is your winter headquarters. Get special pricing on name brand tires, storage, maintenance, and more. And we always offer free vehicle pickup and delivery. This holiday season, wish your way at Capital Ford Lincoln. I started the Shatland Lacrosse Academy three years ago, um, and my main goal for the province of Saskatchewan was to spread the game and the awareness of lacrosse. Jeff Shatler here, number 77 with the Saskatchewan Rush. I currently play forward, 16 years pro. I live, work, and play in the province of Saskatchewan. Direct West mission is to grow Saskatchewan economy by helping small local businesses win with digital advertising services, but they are also a major supporter of local sport, art, and charitable organizations. Year after year, Direct West continues to put their money where their mouth is and ensuring the minor sports and art and music festivals can continue to thrive in our province. They continue to do all they can to promote our communities and assist nonprofit charitable organizations in the effort to improve the quality of life in the province of Saskatchewan. I'm proud to work with Direct West and call the province of Saskatchewan my home. Nestled in the scenic Quapel Valley, just 20 minutes northwest of Regina, is one of the finest golf courses in all of Saskatchewan, the Deer Valley Golf Club. The clubhouse has a full-service restaurant, and customers can enjoy a casual dining experience with spectacular views of the golf course and valley. A fully stocked golf shop staffed by PGA of Canada professionals is equipped to meet all of your golf apparel and equipment needs. Book your tee time, family event, or corporate tournament today at the Deer Valley Golf Club. Call 306-731-1445. Safety is a primary pillar at Core Green. We have core certification. Our workers are following best practices in the industry for safety. We always want to make sure that our contractors, us here at the shop, and our customers can come to work and go home at the end of every day. Give Core Green Systems a call today.
Rod Squad. Now you can join the team with your very own RP Show gear. Head to rodpetersonshop.com and get yours today while supplies last. It's just like we wear on the show. Official RP Show gear at rodpetersonshop.com. You got something to say? You want to add to the show? What are you waiting for? Don't just sit there. Say something. Now, back to the studio with Rod. Uh, and the moose in the studio for me is in beautiful South Florida this week. And for Darren, it is the Great Western Brewery in Saskatoon. Our curling trials coverage is brought to you by Core Grain, doing the right thing for your farm and also for Great Western's original 16 beer. And this is Taco Time Viewer Takeover. Um, they're not tater tots. They're Mexi fries. And one more sponsor mention here, Darren, it, because the overtime is brought to you, as always, by the Four Seasons Sports Palace. Um, the Greek freak texted me. He says, it's football week at the Palace. Monday night football, Giants, Bucks, American Thanksgiving triple header on Thursday. And then the Super Sunday, the CFL semifinals, big screen, no need to ask to have the games put on at the Four Seasons, plus 11 NFL Sunday games. We love sports. Skull! And go, Riders, go. That from George Y. <laughs> now, I just checked the text line, 902 line. Darren, it's flooded with Edmonton fans alerting us to the Elks cleaning house. They said they all got emails. These are season ticket holders. They're watching in Edmonton right now. And I'm like, well, what's, what's your opinion on this? As an Elks fan, I mean, scorching the earth. Can't say I'm surprised. What did you think when you heard this? Yeah, I mean, how can you be surprised when it when it's as bad as it's been? Um, and, and again, you're sending this out to season ticket holders. This is all, you know, looking forward. You know, you want to make sure that your season ticket holders know that as an organization, this is not what you should expect next year. It's going to be better, and we are working towards making it better and a better experience because they need more fans there. They need to get that community in invested, and they need to. It starts with the season ticket holders and that fan base. So no, it's it's not surprising um, when things are this bad, but again, those fans are concerned, and there's a real worry of what it's going to be like next year and next summer and next spring. You know, you have to get that excitement back. So uh, it's going to be a real challenging off season in Edmonton. Yeah, Wayne and Victoria writes in, says, great show as usual, Rod and crew. Thank you. From Janice watching, I think from Calgary, she's got a Stan Peters logo as an avatar. She says, as a season ticket holder for the Elks, good step forward, more interested that they are engaging Wally in the GM search. Okay, now that's news to me that Wally Buono's involved, and I'm guessing maybe three down got to the bottom of that or where that came out from Wally, from what I understand is offering his services as a consultant these days to various CFL entities. And who else would you rather ask than Wally Buono, who incidentally will not be the next general manager of the Edmonton Elks because he is enjoying retirement immensely. But I, I said this with Devin, I'll say it to you, uh, Darren, if I was an Elks season ticket holder, I would be very concerned about the future of the franchise. Obviously you're coming off a three and 11 season an embarrassment. You thought you were going to be a front runner. Football people will tell you they think the Elks had the second most talented roster in the entire CFL, and they go to 3-11. and 11. What does that say? And if you talk to Edmonton football people in that town, this franchise's struggles go back way before Chris Preston to Len Rhodes sealed their fate on this franchise. A guy that you don't ever even hear from anymore was the guy that started them down this road to nowhere. So if the board is making the calls on who stays and who goes, and also the hirings. How confident are you as an Edmonton Elks football fan that this is good news today, that they will replace them with adequate people? That's the question, right? Do they have the right people, you know, sitting around that table on the board that can make the right decisions to bring the right people in place? And all you can do is you have to trust that they're the right people. You have to. Or if they're not, you have to start looking at Okay, where are the real problems? And then we have to address that, whether it's at the boardroom table, whether it's at the very top end, whether it's just, you know, in terms of general manager, coaches, staff, players, whatever that might be, 
really look and figure out what is the real problem here and why aren't we getting the right people in place and why isn't this working? Are we not patient enough? Or is it the fact that we don't have the right people? So there's a lot of evaluating that needs to go on here over the next number of weeks. Yeah, well, this is a highly, highly, highly critical time for that franchise and a pivotal spot in their history as to where they go from here. Darren in Salt Lake City says they need a new culture for sure in Edmonton. Well, they had a great one before <laughs> and they obliterated it. So how do you build a new one? You know, uh, from my cousin, Christine, she says, good show once again. Enjoy the sun. Hope you find a taco time down there. Yeah, me too. By the way, finding, uh, finding tacos, not a problem uh, in South Florida. One minute, one minute remaining in the RP show on this Monday. Darren, what's up for you the rest of the day as far as those curling trials go in Saskatoon? Yeah, I'm off to watch that men's draw at 2 o'clock, and that's Brad Jacobs and Brandon Botcher. Really looking forward to that one. It's also on TSN. And then it's the women at night, 7 o'clock. So uh, excited to get over there. Uh, I'm going to be heading over right away and getting ready for that. So they, they are on the ice in an hour from now. Wonderful. Great job today, uh, Darren. Thanks for checking in. Enjoy the curling. Thank you. Enjoy the sun. We'll be back here tomorrow. Great job by our crew as well. Tomorrow, PA Raiders forward Ozzie Weisblatt. Calgary Stampeders writer Danny Austin from the Calgary Sun. Big thanks to Tim Peel and Devin Haru today. And we'll see you tomorrow at noon Eastern here on the RP Show. Truth's in the coffee. It's Truth Serum. Bob's your uncle. How about that? Oh, no. LFG. Awesome. Spicy.